Lord's above you. All the saints of God said? Amen. All the saints of God said? Amen. All right, now I'm going to, I have uh, hours and hours and hours to teach on on, deliver, on uh, rejection. And uh, we've, been, we've been doing deliverance Wednesday night for a time, and I, really, I felt by the Spirit of God that after our special service that we just had, that uh, God would have us reset. And that was uh, as I was waiting upon the Lord, and I, I was trying to give people what God had me share after our special services that we had, because I knew usually some new people come in. That uh, I was, I was felt like a lot of people have different hurts and wounds and rejection, abandonment, much trauma within their lives. And then there were some prophetic words that, that came forth about the root of rejection. So uh, I'm going to, my talent tonight will be on causes of the root of the rejection. Amen. Now, I'll define rejection tonight and just go into the causes. And that'll probably all that I'll be able to do tonight. Then the, maybe the next time we come together, I'll be talking about the results of the fruits of the manifestation. How does it manifest in us? How does it hinder us and block us from going on? And then there may be a third message, which... Uh, has a lot within it, and it steps out of out of rejection. Amen. The different steps that we take. So, uh, I, you know, just on this one topic, I, I could preach from 10 to 16 hours on just on this one one topic. Okay, so we've got handouts for you tonight, and uh, I'm going to spend just a little, very little time in the scriptures tonight. I'm going to be more in a teaching mode tonight uh, rather than preaching. I turn to Isaiah chapter 53. Just want to shoot just a few scriptures to you. Then I want to get. I want to. Be, I want to define rejection to you, so that you'll be able to see this within your life. While you're turning, I, I'll just say that uh, I was raised in a little bitty town in North Central Missouri, and a uh, little town, of 800 people. I was literally raised upon the ball field. I wanted to be a professional baseball player. Uh, then I. Then I. Became, I got in the band and became a part <coughs> animal. Then uh, the Beatles came to America. That's how long ago this has been. How old, uh, you know, I've been around for a while. So the Beatles came to America in 1964, and that led to one thing to another. They became a foul child, you know, smoking, smoking marijuana, and then much LSD. That led, took me to a deeper trail, cocaine, crystal meth. And I got deeply involved in the counterculture. When I came out, all of that, when I, I got saved, uh, I had a lot, there was generational curses within my family of rejection and fear. And then I had a, a lot of condemnation, I had a lot of shame. And uh, with, uh, within rejection, uh, within, I say this so often, but I had inferiority, insecurity, deep sense of worthlessness, rejection, fear. All these different things, when you, like in, you add them up in a, in a problem, like in a, uh, arithmetic. And end up at the bottom line is unbelief. Okay, so that's what hinders, the, the root of rejection hinders a lot of people. So let me just, uh, real quick in the scriptures, Isaiah chapter 53, there's a Jesus in verse, uh, verse 3, he is despised, he is despised and rejected. The word rejected, rejected means left out forsaken. He is despised, which means dis, uh, dis, disdained, scorned, and disesteemed, and rejected a man, a man of sorrow or pain, and acquainted with grief, which means calamity, and we hid as we were our faces from him. He was, he was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, stricken the spin of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. So with his stripes we are healed. Okay, so... Uh, all that happened to Jesus, and so you see it did not, ne did not negatively affect him. And in Luke chapter 4, in verse 18, I'll just move fast with this. I'm not going to try to preach this. I just want to give you a, a scripture back background. In Luke chapter 14, this is that after Jesus goes through the wilderness, he tempted a test of 40 days and 40 nights with the devil. And he stands in verse 18 and says, The Spirit of God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now here we get some real key thing. He had come to heal the brokenhearted. Now what we're not going to do is put any anyone that has a broken heart. We're not going to put you down and say you don't have faith. We're, we're going to. Jesus wants to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance. If deliverance is the Bible, we're going to preach it like the chips over the main. We're not ashamed of deliverance. We're not ashamed of healing. We're not ashamed of the Holy Ghost. 
We're not ashamed of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, not ashamed of shouting and praise and worshiping God. Amen. I believe the church ought, ought to be the most, the Pentecostal church service ought to be the most exciting thing happening within the city. Amen. They're Amen. preaching deliverance to the captive, yes. the recovering yes. of the sight of them that are blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Okay, there are people that are bruised. Key words tonight would be re people that have been rejected, you've been hurt, you've been wounded, there's been trauma within your life. So the way we say this over and over, I, I, I illustrate this way. Joyce Meyer uh, now has a tremendous ministry. Her own birth dad violated her, raped her, uh, in, uh, had intercourse with her over 200 times. <coughs> she thought back at how often it happened, and she estimated 200 times her own birth dad. So when she gets saved, uh, say, I was whacked out. Someone come in that door, and, and they may come to, they may come in with all that wound, all that trauma, all that rejection, all that pain, all that abandonment. Why did these things happen to me? If God's so good, how could this ever happen to me? Yeah. Okay, so when she gets saved, she she's she's demonized. She all these hurts and all the wish she's carrying all the things. Now, I know what it's like to uh, Jeremiah chapter six says, "Heal the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace." I knew what it's like to be in church and look around seeing the other people having peace, but inside me there was a war going on. Okay, there was a war going on. The war was fear, rejection, insecurity, lust, all kinds of selfishness, pride. And uh, John chapter 5 uh, says, will you be made whole? So the man by the pool of storms said, will you be made whole? That's the question. First Thessalonians chapter 5, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. I say this very often, so I want to elaborate upon this. But the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body would be preserved blameless till the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you look right up here, this is basically what we're talking about. That scripture says that we have spirit, or soul, and we're body. And here's where the demonic strongholds are, is in the mind, the will, the emotions, the heart, sickness upon your body, and your sexual realm, put curse of poverty upon you, and that's just kind of the beginning. There's all kind of occult experience, false religions, you know, that we've been involved in, different different things come in. Okay, so uh, what, I, what I want, if, this, if you get at this blue flyer right here, just to kind of, I just want to walk you through this a little bit. I, I, the important thing is that you be ministered to tonight. This is a process. Well, what, we, what I do not teach is that you come to church, you get two demons cast out of you, go live happily ever after. That is so far from the truth. Yes. And we want to teach you how to pray, we want to teach you how to praise, how to worship, how to read the Bible, how to respond to God, yeah. how to relate to God, how to obey God. The highest form of worship is obedience. Because if you look upon this blue sheet right here, at the bottom it says root causes of rejection. Now, so it shows you the tree and all the fruit. Now, and I, I have a... The red, the red sheet will show you a whole bunch of more fruits and what's, what's upon this. But I want you to see this one when there's root causes. Uh, the first piece of property that I ever owned, I uh, I went out, I saw dandelions, and I went out and I pulled those dandelions. This yellow flower off the top, and I thought, I got it now. And the next day, two days later, there's, there's, there's dandelions back there white because I never did with the root. Okay, it keeps growing back. So with me, alcohol is not my problem. Yes. In, in here was my problem. My mind, my will, my emotions, my heart, the rejection, the, the different fear within me. So the alcohol, because of the fear, the insecurity, the deep sense of worthlessness, the negative self-image, the low self-esteem that was in me, that in, in feeling so inadequate, inferior, and insecure, when I could drink I drink one, two beers, and then all of a sudden I I get both. And I did, and back in those days, I didn't call it cans of beer. I called it cans of courage because I realized I bit, something would change within me. Okay, so when you get saved, you want to drink the new wine. The new wine's better than the old. Okay, so there's different things. So there'll be people that the alcohol's not their problem, drugs is not their problems, immorality is not their problem. Many times people people just have sex because it's about attention, and not so much about sexual fulfillment. There are people that that do that. But it's also about uh, somebody gives somebody decides to give them attention, and they want the attention, and they don't get any really fulfillment out of the sex. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Now let me just define. I want to get. Uh, I'm going to take my time with this because 
I want to I want to be able to walk you through this for those that are really serious for God. We want to help you. Now, we got these handouts, and I'm gonna have different books available for you. I want to explain some of that. This is not about teaching you to come to me to get help. This is about teaching you how to go to God. We will we will help you, but we don't want you to become dependent upon us. So we're going to recommend books to you, and I'm giving you these handouts. And then that handout has a different, every one of those in the red sheet, where you found that to be a uh, different individual demon. So in this book right here, God's Remedy for Rejection by Derek Prince. It's a very helpful book. So uh, we recommend read, read every book that you can upon deliverance. Uh, this is this is probably the, the, the most powerful book, in my opinion, that I, that I know of on rejection. This is my, my favorite. This is by Frank Hammond called Overcoming Rejection. Okay, so what what uh, what we're saying to you is that this we're teaching you how to go to God, how to study for yourself. When you begin reading these books, God will give you revelation. Amen. And with these handouts, you're going to be able to discern the different individual demons, and there's more that's even upon the red sheet. So God, as you begin to study this, I would read book after book after book after book after book, Amen. and when I would see something, I'd get a certain revelation. And then I would, I would go through deliverance, I would see certain things within there, like the Antichrist spirit. I thought, surely I'm going to have that one, but I had Antichrist spirit. But I began to realize, by my fruits, okay, this is extremist. So when you read this, you, God will show you, ask God to reveal you to you, so that you could be yes, a healed, delivered, restored. Yeah. Let me do this before I forget. This one, uh, uh, one of the best illustrations I feel like God's ever given me. This was me when I first got saved. Now, every one of those rocks represent uh, I was full of self and full of demons. So that would be the lust, that would be the rejection, that would be the fear, the inadequacy, low self-esteem, that would be the self-image, a deep sense of worthlessness. When you add all those things up in the colony, the bottom line is comes out of belief. Now, this could contain, I'm saved, but I cannot contain very much water. Because there's rock, what we call rocks in the well. So that's why you see there's a there's a great story in the Bible about redigging the wells. Okay, so what I had my well had to be redone. So everyone, as I began to go through deliverance and be purged and cleansed and confess and repent, then I would now you could see I gained ground. So now several of the rocks, the different demons have been taken out of me. Now I can contain more water. Now I have more peace. Now I have more anointing. Now I, now I have more authority. Now I have more love. Now I, I'm more sensitive to God. As I begin to grow and go deeper within deliverance, then I came to the place where I am now. Still, still got a few lurking around down in there, but I can contain a whole lot more of God. This is what we call the process. When, whenever you say yes to God and you surrender, when you surrender to God for wholeness, that you may be whole, spirit, soul, and body, the soulless realm, the mind, the will, the emotion, the heart, the body, the sexual realm. So when you when you really want God so much. You will allow God not only to deal with the outward man, but the inward man. Yes, when you yes. when you really want the anointing of God, you yes, allow God to deal not only what you do physically, but what you entertain within your heart, yes, within your mind, even in your thought realm, and even in your motives. If you really have to want God yes, to allow God to deal with the motives, yes. and that's where the anointing, that's why you see some people in the church that are so, so powerfully anointed. Okay, now this is covered for the wounded soul by Frank Heyman. All these books are right back there, that whole section back there, the three sections uh, on uh, our books on uh, deliverance and breaking curses, the books, CDs, and DVD. This is Comfort for the Wounded Soul by Frank and Ida May Hammond. This is, this is uh, when you read these books, you'll get revelation. This is by John Eckhart, called, in, uh, called Destroying the Spirit of Rejection. Frank, uh, John Eckhart, Destroying the Spirit of Rejection. You have to understand, it's a spirit, okay? Yes. And it afflicts you, it causes you pain, mental and emotional pain. Now, this is a, what we call a handbook. This is a, it's right back there. And this, uh, I think, a $16 book we got for $8. This is a handbook that's a how-to. This is where you begin. Okay, so what we tell people, start here. That's a wonderful place to begin. And as you begin to read this, uh, God will, will, will reveal you to you in different strongholds within your life so that you'll help. And what we, what we tell people, you do it as God leads you. What we tell people, create a library. Okay, so if you get a book like this, uh, Overcoming Rejection, and uh, what, what I found out, you, your loan books out, they don't come back. 
So then I would tell people, okay, uh, you know, I would recommend the book to someone. If they can't buy it, I'll buy it for them. Yes. I'll go to church again. Mm. Okay. Uh, so try to create a library because you'll go back. Yes. These things, the limits are so big, you don't just read this one time and get it. Amen. You go through some deliverance of one, two, three years later, you have you will have grown yes. because you, you're sunk rock, you're finding him, and your life is being changed. Weaknesses are being changed to strength. Well, I understand you're having spiritual sight and vision, and you're growing, and all the rocks are getting out of your well, and you're getting more revelation. Okay, so I'm, just, I'm going to define rejection uh, to you, and then I'm going to get to the causes of rejection. That's probably where we'll stop tonight. And then we're going to do uh, corporate deliverance. And then for those who we got the time in, we may do some individual deliverance tonight. Okay, to define rejection, it would be just the opposite of acceptance. It makes one feel in love. Anybody beside me ever ever been, so, uh, so to speak, in a crowd still feel alone? Oh, yes. I, could, I could actually be somewhere, and it'd be four or five people over there talking, and I'd hear this voice, this demonic voice would tell me they're talking about you. Yes. They don't like you. They don't love you. See, that, that's the cues of the brother spirit, the lying spirit. Satan yeah. wants to isolate you. Yeah. So then what he's trying to do, he's trying to trap you, he's trying to snare you. Yeah. So you get angry at God, angry at the church, yeah. angry at believers, angry at the preacher or whoever, yeah. uh, angry at your mate, so that you go sin. And what what happened, the devil just got to you, he tricked you by yes. lying and you accuse you of the brother. Okay, so Satan doesn't want you to feel loved and accepted. that safe and secure, wanted and needed, provided for and protected by God. He wants you anger God. The devil yeah. wants to do things to you, hurt you, wound you, uh, reject you, and want, and then tell you that God's doing this to yeah. you. And if God loved you, how come all these things yes. are going on within your life? Well, it was part of the answer that would be generation curses. Yes. So in the top shelf back there, top shelf we got, well, yeah, on top shelf we got... We won't, it's, it's too too big of a topic even to go to uh, now, but there had to be a whole different series on generational curses and personal sin curses. So those things that run the family. The medical field understands cancer runs in family, uh, uh, diabetes runs in family, and so there are certain things that run it runs within family. Divorce runs in family, alcoholism, yeah. incest runs within family. Rejection runs in family, runs in my family. Fear was in, in my family, in my mother's side, very strong, very powerful. Okay, let me just uh, go through some of these. and it, Just uh, discern yourself and, and begin to evaluate yourself so that you may have not done anything wrong. There could be something generational, a thing called generational curses that you see in Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 and 5. The sins of the fathers are passed out to the third to fourth generation. So there could be things that could be with us we had nothing to do with uh, that's been passed down generationally. Someone and the generation before had a sin and it's passed down to it. Or we have done things and we call we call personal sin curses. In other words, in in uh, Genesis in Genesis chapter three, Adam and Eve, God had done a pretty good thing for for Adam and Eve. Okay, so who showed up? The devil showed up. Why? Okay, but the devil needed the cooperation of Adam and Eve's will. He needed them to make a choice. He needed them to choose yes. sin to get the league right to get to them. Okay, so there's certain things. That this is why we don't want we, as we go along with this, you're gonna see that we have a will. Yes. It's very important yeah. that we understand we don't sin because we got a demon. We right. we yes. sin because we make a choice. Yes. Okay, so yeah. the will right here is very strong. So Satan will try to let me just bounce this out. Uh, imagine driving down the highway, you get too far to the left, you go get in the ditch. Too far to the right, you go and get in the ditch. You're going to find this mess right in the middle, right in, in the road, okay? So what you'll see within the land of the will, you see some people so strong-willed, controlling, jealous, dominating, yes. controlling, jezebelic. On the other side, there'd be people that be, be so passive. So with, within the land of the will, we, we could be, be so strong-willed or so weak-willed, we let people run over us, and, right, and right, we yeah. sin with people because we, we don't even have the courage or the, or the strength to say no. Yes, okay, yes. so weak, weak will are, are too strong. The answer is right in the middle. Yes, Lord. And, we, and we need yeah. to grow in that. No. Yes. Okay, to define rejection is a, is a great feeling of awareness within us that we feel unwanted. And I'll, get, uh, well, and I'll just enlarge upon that whenever we get to uh, the causes of rejection. <laughs> Feeling unwanted, unneeded, Denied, repelled, shunned, neglected. How many people have been feel like a n neglected? 
are abused, abandoned, feel all alone, could be feel alone in the crowd, ignored, avoided, these are all definition and projection aspects of it, disapproved, refused, unaccepted, discarded, cast off, on the outside looking in and out of place. Now I will give you the causes of rejection, we will enlarge upon this, okay? Causes of rejection could be, understand that a lot of this could be generational. Yes. And there's those generational things passed down within, within the family. Okay, one of the main things would be parent-child relationship. So much comes in through the parents. Now, it's, uh, I want to be careful how I say this, that you could be right here today and your one of your parents was less than perfect. What will really it's very important before we go into deliverance tonight and that we we forgive. Amen. That we there's no Amen. unforgiveness, there's no bitterness, no yeah. re, no resentment, no anger. Okay, that's a legal right for the demons to stay in there. What helps people forgive mom and dad, and we're gonna see the divorce and and remarriage, there could be a lot of things that can happen uh, and rejection in that. Let's just say that a, a parent for us here, one of us or more here, our parent was uh, either verbal abusive, physically abusive, sexually abusive, abandonment, a whole bunch of different things, whatever. Uh, what helps us to uh, forgive and release our parents is understand that hurt people Heard of the people. Yes. So if if our mommies or daddies or step parents are hurting, they hurt other people. Now if they hurt us, are we going to hurt our children? No. And no. then those children hurt other children. Right. When what helps us to understand who hurt my mom and dad? Yes. Mm -hmm. Who hurt my? What happened to my mom and my dad that they would be this abusive? Here. Uh, I, there was never a second within my life that I ever doubted that my mom and dad, uh, um, well, let me, let me put it this way. Um, I, I have one sister older than me, six years older than I, and my mother hemorrhaged whenever she had my sister six years before me. She hemorrhaged so bad the doctor told my mom and dad, don't ever have any more children because my, mama could, my mother could die, she'll bleed to death. So five years go by, and they decide they're going, they're going to have another child, and which ended up being me. So when I was being birthed, my mother passed on. My mother actually left her body and was going up towards a bright light, and she heard a Catholic nun. She heard a Catholic nun yelling, no, you can't leave. You have to come back here and raise your children. Wow. Now, the reason I said that was that I was so wanted by my mom and dad, they so wanted another child that they were willing to risk my mother's life. Amen. And so uh, my, my mother's uh, side of the family was raised Catholic, so I was I was born in a Catholic hospital. So a Catholic nun, my mother actually left her body and was ascending, and this Catholic nun calls her back, calls her back into her body, said, no, you can't leave. You had to come back here and raise these children. Now, it's just the opposite. You may be in here, it's just the opposite is true. There has been abusive, there's been abandonment, there's been mean, there's been verbal abuse, there's been physical abuse, there's been sexual abuse, there's been abandonment, a whole bunch of things. Now, when we, uh, one, one of the reasons I shared this about my mom and dad, my, my, my mom and dad really were not the problem. I was the problem. I sinned because I yes. chose to sin. Yes. See? Mm -hmm. Now, my mom and dad were both raised very poor. My, my dad was raised so poor, there were, there were three boys, and they slept in the same bed. They had to sleep sideways. And uh, the mother, the mother uh, rented out a room, and, and wherever, wherever they lived, they have enough money to have food. My mother was raised in a very large uh, family, and the only way that they could, they could pay the bills were they all, all the boys. There were a whole bunch of boys. There was eight or nine of them, and they all went hunting and fishing. And, and I mean, they were good hunters. They would... They would go hunting and they they would kill a hundred rabbits. Wow. There was no limits back in the wow. quail hunting, uh, fishing. They'd go deer hunting, and if they did if they didn't hunt fish, there'd be no food. Yeah. Okay, that, that was that. But uh, my mom and dad really didn't have parenting skills. Okay, so that I ended up being 
They wanted me to have everything they never had. And I ended up being a spoiled brat. Uh -oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am underlined and put that in capital letters. That caused me a lot of trouble. They were not my problem. I have to understand they were raised at the time. They were not parented. They were not parented. They did not know how to pair. Okay, so well, are we going to learn how to pair? And, you know, and, and, uh, you know, me becoming a full-fledged hippie and long, you know, long hair, all the whole thing. For anybody in my hometown area that knew me, would once said, would would uh, would Bill become a pastor? Would Bill? Of all people, would he once upon a time teach parenting skills? <laughs> We're going to parent him. We're going to teach him. See, God did. See, the only things are possible then are, are, are possible with God. Okay, we have to understand where people are coming from, okay? Okay, so it's very important that what we don't do is just come to church and hear about a historical Jesus, what he used to do. No, he's the God of the now. So he wants... He wants uh, people's life. To, it's very important that when you come to the house of God, that you need to be met. Yes. Okay, we used to do. Uh, we used to have a, a deliverance workshop on Monday night, and uh, we 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 tried doing it without a song service, and it just didn't work because it was just too dry. So that's why we we do have a song service, although we, although we do shorten it on Wednesday night because we want you to have time to be uh, to be delivered to. That's why I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to preach the whole thing here tonight because we're, we're we're defining rejection for you, the causes of rejection, the results of rejection, or the fruits of rejection, or how you, how you can discern the symptoms of it. And then I'm going to go through a long kind of thing here on steps out of rejection. It's very important that we do those steps, okay? Mm -hmm. We want to help you upon your journey to wholeness, that you may be whole, spirit, soul, and body, mind, mind, will, emotions, and a heart. Well, what we can have. We can say with our head we have, we forgive someone, right. but the thoughts are still there, the emotions are still still there, the memories are still there, and the nightmares are still there, the, the bad dreams are still there. Okay, okay. So God's going to help you. Uh, so the uh, parent-child relationship. Now I want you to stop and think. There, there can be different aspects in this. That what if what if what if Daddy is supposed to be the provider of the family? What if he's an alcoholic? And the main thing he cares about being drunk. The main thing he cares about is his alcohol. So that's going to create a lot of when, when alcohol is his number one goal. Okay, what is it? So that what happens to that ha that home then? Yeah. Okay, so then he'd be angry and he does he could be verbally abusive to different people. What if what if daddy or what if mommy uh, is a drug addict? What's the number one goal going to be? The focus is going to be drunk. Yeah. Where where will I get my drugs from? Where will I get my alcohol? I'm going to be drunk. I'm going to be high. I've known parents to, to be to be addicted to gambling. I've known parents that would uh, had a uh, gambling addiction. They would work had a wonderful full time job with a good salary. Whenever they get their pay, they would drive 100 miles an hour to the gambling casino and stay there till every penny was gone. And then come home with multiple children. And there's no lights. There, there's no electricity. Uh, there, there's no heat. There's no food and there's no money within the house, yeah. and there's uh, and there's she's got multiple lovers within the house, okay, so, so there's no money, so she was ignoring the needs of the people. Now what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is we could have. Uh, here's why I feel like the Holy Spirit wanted me to say this: we could be raised in such a way that we think abnormal is normal. Yeah. When David Wilkerson started Teen Challenge when he was a pastor in in, Phil, uh, in Pennsylvania, in this little bitty town, I think of 300 people, and he would go to New York City. Whenever, whenever he would go there, he 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 met kids that had been out of a 10 block area. They thought yeah. they thought that was the whole world. They never saw beyond. Yeah. Yeah. So we had that vision to look beyond where we are right now. Right. You have to see that there's yeah. another land, there's yeah. a promised land that God wants yeah. to take you to. Amen. Okay, so uh, you know there, there's there's other ways that. Uh, a mommy or daddy can create, uh, bring rejection to the home. Some of them could just work 70, 80 yeah. hours a week and be gone all the time. Yeah. So the message to the child is, you know, never hear from me. There's yeah. no there's no love, there's no communication. Right. Uh, no, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, so a much rejection come, comes to the parent-child relationship, absentee parents, whether it be through alcohol, whether it be drugs, 
whether it be they're abusive, they're workaholic, they're controlling, mean, they're je very Jezebelic, uh, lay down the law, very legalistic. You make one little mistake, they pull off the belt and, and yeah. walk you. Right. Okay, so uh, the next one would be massive, unmet emotional needs. Okay, so let me just, our, our basic needs would be, would be, uh, see, if you're deprived of love, God is love. Amen. And and it's yes. very important that, see, if if, uh, if mommy and daddy, if they don't feel love, how are they going to get love right. when they don't, they, they don't feel right. love, they don't know right. love, they're not experiencing love. Right. That's where somewhere along the line, we've got to get right with God, yes, stay right with God. Okay? We've got to stop the curses that is not going to be passed on. It's very important that whenever we come here, we say this so often, it's not that to come to the house of God. We must we must meet with the God of the house. We must receive the God of the house, develop a relationship with the God of the house, so that love, when the love of God is not doctrine, not teaching, not a theory, it's a reality to you, in you, so that you can release it to other people. And when that love, when that love is so real to you, uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says the love of God constrains us. Yes. It, it will, Lord, it will yeah. it'll stop us from doing things we all not to do, and it give us the ability to do things we should do. Yeah. Okay, so that it, it will be easy to release other people and understand. Uh, my mommy or my daddy or step-parent really hurting people, who hurt them? So that when you realize... There's a whole lot of hurting people. Churches, yes. if if you're if you've grown enough, you realize churches are full yes. of hurting, yes. wounded, yes. devastated people, yes. and we in leadership are not to use them to be the need within Amen. us. We have to take you see in, in Mark chapter one, Jesus was teaching in the synagogue and the man screamed out, the demon screamed out through the man in church in front yes. of other people. That's Jesus so cast out devils in Luke chapter 13. Begin to verse 10, there was a woman in the synagogue. Jesus was teaching in the synagogue. He stopped his teaching and he said, uh, he missed to the woman that had a spirit of a furnace of what, uh, that she was bowed down and could no wise lift herself up. Isn't it true that, that there's people here? Now, I was one of them. If I would have known what to do, I would have done it. But I did not know what to do. I did not realize comprehend what was wrong with me. I didn't realize how I was for myself, how, how demonized I was. Even though in 1975, when I became a Christian, I cast demons out of other people. But when I church, when I went to church, it was not being modeled. No one was doing it publicly. It was not modeled in front of me, so I had no understand what a great tool. Uh, I worked for Teen Challenge uh, three or four different times, and I would cast out demons there, but it was never modeled in church, and so I didn't realize how big this was, and that's why we're going to cast out demons right here in church in front of other people. Amen. And uh, See, the song, the song service that we have, with, and uh, if, if people make it through pre-service prayer, and they make it through a song service, uh, and then we, we get into the supernatural, the Every time a demon, <coughs> the last year's life right here, every time a demon's cast out, the Bible calls it a miracle. We've got four yeah, scriptures yeah, right there yeah. in that life of the flyer. Yeah. Every time a demon's cast out, uh, God. God calls it a miracle. So then yeah. the supernatural, the way you pray, the way we praise yeah, and worship, yes. uh, it will uh, it will drive terrors at the door. It just oh, protects yeah. us from falling. Yeah. 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 This is not a place to hide. Okay? This would be one of the last places to hide. Yeah. Okay, so it's just separate the sheep from the goats, yeah, and Lord. it just... That's just protected. Yeah. We have to understand massive, unmet emotional needs. We have emotional pain. And if love and acceptance, okay, so some of the things we need, man's basic need, we need love, yeah. acceptance, yeah. safety, security. We need the identity. Yeah. You're my son. You are my daughter. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. See, there, when we realize and comprehend there's mommies and daddies, they were never told that they were loved. No. So they don't tell us that yeah. we're. Yes. But what we don't want to do is pass that on to our children, no. and they pass it on to their children, yeah. and it keeps on going. It's got to stop. Yeah. It's got to stop, okay? Amen. Okay, so we got to, we got to be filled with the love of God, yes, so and that's why it's about relationship here. It's Amen. about praying, it's about singing, it's about praising, it's about worship, it's about relating to God, it's about experience of God, meeting with God such a way that you you love Him and He loves you, yes. you experience the love yes. of God. And yes. that's just, I'm just God. weeping here tonight during Wonderful. the song service because I felt the love of God Amen. so powerful. Amen. Okay, so we have basic emotional needs 
of love, acceptance, safety, security, identity, communication. Yes. yes. If you, we've Lord. never been communicated to that I love you, I, I'm going to protect you, I'm going I'm to meet your needs. Recognition, you're my son, you are my daughter. Amen. Provision. So in the home, there needs to be food, there needs to be clothes, there needs to be water, electricity, gas protection. I'm, I'm going to give you an illustration, and uh, this is this is ugly, but this is these are homes that uh, I've actually been in. Okay, that when when you go, that there's the first thing when you pull up from the house, you see a whole bunch of garbage bags outside, and the garbage bags have been opened up by dogs. And you look, and there's the weeds are growing, the, the grass is not mowed, and uh, the grass is growing up, and you see a whole bunch of poison ivy, and you see a whole bunch of poison oak. And inside, you begin, you begin to walk into the place, the first thing you hit you is the smell. There's a massive stink within there. And if the, the place, you open up the door, and you walk in, it's full of cockroaches. Now, I'm going to say I'm going to say this for a reason, okay? Inside... You open up the door and the stink hits you. You see cockroaches crawling on the walls. There's filth. There's a strong stench of dog poop. There's dirty dun smell, uh, dirty diapers. The cigarette smoke is in the air. Empty beer cans all over the place. There's a smell of evil weed. They've been puffing marijuana. You look closely upon the uh, kitchen table. You see white powder, crumbs of white powder upon there uh, on the table, uh, different drugs. There's mice there. The children have head lice. Uh, TV is watching Jerry Springer. There's mold all over the walls. And there's rats there. There's big, red, big rat holes. Yeah. Now, the reason I said that, yeah. I go to that house and tell the people in there, I invite them to the church. Yeah. I invite them to the church, and here's what I'm told. What? Leave all of this to go to church? What is this? See, they think they're winning. They think they're winning. Yes, yes. You see the deception? Yes. That's more sin yes. and curses would take people. Yes. See? Yes. And they think they're winning. See, yes. the abnormal to them become the normal. Yes. I know that's ugly, but see, that, that's that, real. See, to that's pull real. people, that's what the book of Jesus said, pulling people out of the fire. Yes. See, there has to be truth. Yes, Lord. Okay, now that, see, the, uh, let, me, let me give you another example. That uh, there was a the family that, that came, and uh, the daddy was a, a crackhead. He was strung out upon crack, and uh, there was multiple children. The, the mother was coming to church, and uh, there was a uh, they lived quite a ways from here, uh, toward in, in the inner city, and the, they had I found out they had no food. So I went to Sam's wholesale and I got a whole bunch of food, and I drove over there, and. Uh, I, I'd been to the house once, and again, there, there's there's no electric, no electricity, there's no food, there's no money. I think the only thing they had was water. And the the daughter had come to church one time and, and said, Pastor Bill, my shoes don't fit. And and my mind my mind was thinking her shoes are are too big. She was going to school with shoes that did not fit her. But what I found out was her, sh her shoes were way too small. She had to jam her feet into yeah. these little shoes yeah. and go to go to school like that, being mocked. Yes. Uh, maybe having two changes of clothes. Why? Because Daddy was a crackhead. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I take a whole bunch of food over there, great big ham like that, a whole bunch of food. I take it over there. So then uh, I, I drove all the way over there. And I think it was on a Wednesday. We had church that. So the mama cut the church that night. And I said. Uh, how'd you like that food? She goes, what food? Yeah, um, no one was there but him. And I, it was so far away, we had church that night. I left the food. Normally, I don't leave food with someone that does drugs. Right. He had taken all the all the food, took it to the crack, crack yeah. dealer, yeah. and traded all the food for crack. Oh, yeah. And he, yeah. and he, he see, see the shelf yeah. Yeah. Okay, now imagine being the child. Amen. Imagine being, there was multiple children in the family. Now, I'm saying there are hurting people. There are reasons that we get to the place where we understand. Uh, I want to know how. See, Satan wants to negatively affect our personality, yes. and what God yes. wants to do totally heal Amen. that we would be yes. free to give and receive yes. love. Yes. With yes. me, it was 
suspicion and mystery because not only was I in the drug scene, I got in the camera culture and there was stealing, there was scheming, lying, conniving, and manipulation. Uh, no one trusted everybody, scheming on one another, pretending that they loved one another, pretending they were friends. Everybody's played a con. Uh, so when I got saved, I had strong mistrust and suspicion, and uh, it was real hard for me to trust even God, to, to even open up the God. So we have to understand the reasons why we are the way that we are. Yes. And what God wants to do is heal us. Yeah. So when we read yes. these books, see, there's a certain thing that there's things that we need to do to yeah. work out our own salvation yeah. or feel true. Yeah. We need to study the yeah. short yeah. of truth. Yeah. I, I want to say this. I don't know how many times I'll say that. I'll say that over and over. Many people come, they walk in the door and they think, I'll get two demons cast out of me, I'm going to live happily ever, ha happily ever after. That's not true. Yes. We really need to learn how to pray. Yes. See, yes. Satan doesn't want you to know God. Satan yes. could care less if you come to church. Long as you don't, long as you don't experience the love, yes. long as you still feel the hurt, the pain, the yes. rejection, the, as long as you feel uh, uh, afflicted, tormented, uh, mistrust, mistrust, even God yes. and people, yes. leadership, men, yes. women. Yes. See, so isolated, withdrawn, right. no relationship, yeah. so Satan can destroy us. Mm -hmm. That's what was so much of much of a strategy, okay? So massive, unmet emotional needs. So God wants to fill you with the love of God, but yes. love, the love of God would not be a doctrine of teaching a theory. Amen. So that you wouldn't have to relate to God, so that you can communicate to God your love to God. Love God with all of your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. So when, when you receive God, God is love. Yes. Satan can't stand. Yes. Satan can't stand for Jesus to be the center of the yes. church. Yes. He can't stand when you pray. He can't stand when you sing to God. He can't stand when you praise God. He can't stand when you worship God. Because he's not the center. He's losing control of you. So if we can drive him, he didn't want to be with the blocks of this place because of the powerful praise Amen. and yes, worship. Amen. Praise God. I want to touch up, I want to just on this one area here tonight, and then Pastor Jan, help me remember, we're going to have a short uh, question and answer period. Okay, so the massive, unmet emotional needs are physical needs and, and spiritual mental needs. An, another cause of, of rejection is divorce. That many, there be such... A divorce is so devastating to, yes. to a whole lot of people. Yes. Uh, I'm old enough, was raised far enough out in the country. I, I thought back, uh, I went to a small country school. There was only, I think, 25 people in my graduating class. I thought back, and I, I can only remember one one of my classmates, of their, their mom and dad had been divorced. Now, divorce is so, yeah. so common. Okay, so what that can happen, when that happens at a young age, understand, that may have really hurt you, that may have wounded you, that may have traumatized you. You may have come out of that with rejection. Uh, maybe mommy left or maybe daddy left or both of them are gone. And see, many times the children think, how come mommy and daddy don't love me? The children have a certain way of thinking that upon themselves. What did I do wrong? Yeah. How, come, how come mommy or daddy doesn't love me? And so we have to understand, uh, I, I won't have time to, to, to go there to that, but I want to, in, uh, in Isaiah, and in the book of Psalms, when you understand that much rejection and pain comes through the, the parent-child relationship, when you, when you understand this, that you come to the place that you really become a Christian. To every person upon planet Earth, to the believer, God becomes their spiritual father. To the unbeliever, the devil's their spiritual father. Yes. You see that in John chapter 8, you are your father, the devil, right. who was a liar and a murderer. Yes. So when, when people say no to Jesus, they're actually saying to yes to a murderer and a liar. Right. So then they say, yeah. they hurt me. Uh, how? Right. <laughs> yes. 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 Okay, what happens is when you understand Father God, then will Father you to the believer. We we have to activate that. We have to learn how to grow into that yes, and be sensitive yes. and allow God to Father you. He will actually Amen. Father you. Yes, Jesus will live His life through you, and the Holy Spirit will anoint you. When you get to that place where you understand Father God is fathering you. Okay, so they said, uh, God, our Father, you are the. You are the potter, and we are the clay. You put us upon the potter wheel. So what happens, Father, 
will change your weaknesses into strength. He will change your rejection into acceptance. So whatever area that you're weak in, he'll cause that to grow. That's why it's important that you read these books and you study. Study to show yourself approved. What you don't want to do, and what the, the message that leadership didn't want to send to you, just attend church and you will live happily after. That's not true. We want you to get God in you, develop a powerful relationship with God, when you feel fathered, fathered by Father God. Father God is so involved in my life, I'll be faithful. Jesus is in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Uh, I've, I've been crucified with Christ, never was I lived, yet not live. Christ liveth in me. The life I now live with the flesh, I live with the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself to me. Through the Spirit that received him, he has already given you the power to become, the power to become the Son of God, even to them that believe upon his name. Secondly, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit wants you to come upon you. Who wants to sit in church born and unsaved to the day they think about it? Now me, I want everything God has for you. I want my full inheritance. Father has purpose of destiny for you. He has a plan for your life. He has an inheritance for you. And now go, I'm going to get everything God has for you. So much. So much God has for you. Oh, Lord, thank you so much. Hey, I understand that without going into thank detail. Life. That divorce can be a tremendous source of pain, rejection, yes. and can just traumatize, yes. be a great hurt, a great yes. wound to a lot of people. Uh, the death of a parent. I've, I've, I've uh, mm -hmm. talked with people. Uh, in my, I remember in my heathen days, there, there was a man, uh, when, I, when I became uh, saved, he, he would tell me he hated God. And the reason he hated God, uh, there was right in the... Catholicism, and, and his mom and dad both died when he was young, and he hated God. He just, I mean, you just mentioned God, and he just started ranting and raving. He hated God uh, because both of his parents died. So we talked about workaholic. Okay, now, let, let me just talk about some issues here, okay? That you may be right here, and unwanted pregnancy, unplanned pregnancy, could cause rejection in you or in your children. Uh, can I say this? Uh, imagine being 15, 16, 17 years old, and uh, just, uh, uh, I'll give an example. Uh, there was a teenage daughter, 16, 17, 18, 16, 17, I think, in church, and her daddy was the pastor. Her daddy was the senior pastor, and she gets pregnant, uh, Imagine the child in the womb can feel the emotions of the parent. I don't want to be pregnant. This is embarrassing. I don't want the child. That child in the womb can feel that. You may be here, and you don't know why you feel unwanted and unneeded. You have no clue. See, because abnormal become normal to you. And what happened, what can happen in that situation is that we have to come to the point that we feel, see, and it says in the Bible, you are accepted in the beloved. We have to come to the place that God is so real, so full of God. That's why I love that song, Invincible. It's like putting a rocket upon the uh, uh, launching pad at Cape Canaveral. They're going to send a rocket to the moon. you got to have a field within the yeah, rocket. Yeah. You can be so full of God, you feel invincible. No, no matter what comes against me, yeah. I'm going up. Amen. What shall separate us yeah. from the love of God? Yeah. Shall yes. tribulation, shall distress, shall problem, shall nothing will separate you from the love of God. Yeah. See, once you get, you got to, you got to contend to get to the light. Yes, but no, we in leadership, we should never allow people, we, we got to challenge people, don't come to church and, and let love be a doctrine teaching theory and you not experience it. Amen. See, the, the reason people dance and sing and praise all over their place, because they are experiencing the love of God. They yes. love God and they're so thankful, they're so grateful, they can't shut up. So I have to, I have to on Wednesday now, i got to short the song, because you all go on for quite a while. Oh, yes. okay? What you all get done, what is once the train gets going, the hard to get a stop. Okay? Yeah, I gotta get. I want to go so far here tonight, and I'm going to friends. And, and let me, <coughs> let me go on with that one story that I was sharing about this 17 year old girl. Her daddy was the pastor of a church. What happens is this girl gets pregnant. She is so traumatized. She's so uh, her her mindset of of what of what she's done and what how that would affect mommy and daddy and the ministry 
this girl commits suicide. The girl commits suicide. Now the daddy is in the pulpit preaching. The daddy is in the pulpit preaching. The girl's been buried. And the boy that got her pregnant is sitting in the church. And he loves her. He loves her. So you've got to have God. Yes. This yes. beautiful teenage daughter that he loved. See, we got to work through some issues. Yes. Yes. See, you could do, you could do all things through Christ yes. the strength of okay? yes. You could forgive. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Imagine wow. all that they did to Jesus. Okay. All that they did to Jesus. Yes. Okay. Uh, and what they did to Stephen. Hold not the sin against them. They know not what they did. Okay. Uh, That's cool, yes. See, uh, re religion just church you into and make you miserable. But a real relationship with God, God, you you have you take on the nature, the character, the fruits of God, uh, love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, patience, self-control, faithful. You'll be faithful to God no matter what storm God, no matter what problem God. Because this is better than that. When it comes down to this simple, Jesus is better than the, than the devil. The Holy Spirit is better than the demons. Uh, the kingdom of God is better than the kingdom of the world. Truth is better than lie. Life is better than death. Freedom is better than bondage. See, when you get to the place, that's where freedom begins. You still may have a few demons in there that need to be cast out, but it's set within you. I mean, it's set within you. I mean, let me say it's set. They go back. They go back. Okay, there could be a lot of things when they do. There could be generational. I know uh, one of. I want to talk about some issues here. I want. I want to be gentle with this. That there could be people come to church. See, we talked about uh, Joyce Meyer. What happened to her? She'd been violated at least two hundred times by her birthday. Christine Kane, a woman minister. She, uh, her mother. <coughs> Her mother, had, uh, she had Christine Kane's little bitty baby and took her to some place, I don't know, uh, orphanage or whatever, put her upon the doorsteps. I don't know if it was wherever she took her. She had no name, didn't know where she had come from. And then uh, Christine Kane then was, was molested for 12 years of her life. And she came to the place, she said, here's what she said. The 12 years, number one, I don't know who my birth dad is. I don't know who my birth mom, mom is. I had no name. They took me to this place. All they get, they just gave me a number. I was a number. That's who I was. I was a number. I had no identity. Okay, but she found her identity in God. Amen. God became her father. Amen. God yes, became God. her father. She she developed a relationship with Father God, with yes. Father. Yes. Father God began to father her. Yes. Jesus began to live in her, and the Holy Spirit began to teach her and guide her. She had a relationship with Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and that has a tremendous ministry. Yes. She came to the place and said, those 12 years will not define the rest of my life. Amen. Forgetting the past and reaching yes. forth. Yes. Forgetting the past and yes. reaching forth. Don't just... Yes. See, we got to reach forth. We know, we know what's been back there, but what we, what we don't know is no, and what's there. So we got to, when God invades your present, they take you to the future. Don't let your past keep you from your future. We've already given enough territory to the devil. Sam Duncan? Okay, so I say that to say this, that if you're here, if there's been molestation, if there's been incest, if there's been rape, if there's been all the above, God can heal you Amen. and deliver you. Yeah. Yeah. The memories can go away. Every demon can be cast Amen. out. Yeah. You can forgive the person. You can go on with God. Yes. That what happened to you in the past will not, Amen. will not define your future. Yes. Okay, you'll be healed. Yes. He will heal you really of your wound. Any, healed. any rejection, any hurt, any wound, any abandonment, any trauma that comes to your life. Real. That is God's specialty. That's why I share. Heal the brokenhearted. Amen. 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 God heal the wounds. <laughs> God has the power to do that. He'll Amen. give you a new heart, okay? Amen. Yes. Okay, much uh, rejection comes in through through peer pressure, to different people saying horrible things to you, uh, calling you all kind of names. Uh, Frank Hammond says that his, uh, uh, his, I think he had two or three brothers, and they his parents wanted to have one more child, they wanted to, wanted to have a girl, and, they, and here he comes. He had, he had nothing to do with it. He comes out of boy. Uh, but his mother wanted a girl. Uh, and already had about three boys and one the, one the girl. Yeah. And how she would tell him, I didn't want you. Uh, wow. She would tell him, 
through his faith. Wow. Now, see, what I'm telling you, you turn that pain into gain. Yeah. See, yeah. overcome evil with good. Yes, okay, that will not define the rest of your life. So when God invades your present to bring you into the future, don't let your past keep you from what God from Amen. Your future. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. Very important. Through comments, uh, not accepting physical features. You may not, well, may not like your nose, your ears. You know, uh, uh, you'll see people, beautiful women, and uh, they're just almost drop dead beautiful, and they think they're ugly. Because they hate their nose. Right. Well, they hate their eyes. Yes, true. <laughs> what? Yes. Yes. It's true. Yes. It's the devil. And that, they focus on that one thing, yeah. and they like, drop true. dead beautiful. You know? Yes, it's true. Yes. The devil. People have been, been adopted. Be a lot of resentment. How how come? You know, there, there'd be kids go to school. How come other how much? How come other kids got daddies? Yes. Think of how much trauma, how much rejection, how much hurt, how much pain has come into people's life going to school. Two only two or three changes for clothes, same pair of shoes, no daddy. See the pain. Why has this happened to me? What I'm saying. Father God will intervene. See, receive Jesus. To us may that receive him, he give you the power to become yes. the Son of God, even then believe upon his name. What I'm telling you, church attendance will not do this for you. We must receive Jesus, yes. be born again. Yes. Except the man be born again, he cannot see the yes. kingdom of God. Yes. So the kingdom of God will come in there. So when you get saved, that's not the end. That's the beginning of something that will last throughout all of eternity. Yes. Yes. It will grow. <laughs> And the way I, the way I, one of the many ways I describe Christianity is like in education. Okay, the first four years, you're at home, you're with mommy and daddy. Uh, then there's kindergarten, then there's elementary school, then there's junior high, then there's senior high, then there's four-year college, then there's graduate school, then there's doctor degree. How far do you want to go? How, how much you want to learn? How far do you want to grow? How powerful, how alive do you want to be? How much revelation do you want? See, so you set the limit, not yes, God. God. Yes. 30 fold, Matthew, wow. thir Matthew chapter 13, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Now, this is a 100 fold church. Amen. See, people that people only want 5% they are uncomfortable here. <laughs> And that's fine. Yeah. And this, uh, we're just, that's right. uh, we, uh, so that you understand that's what God calls to. Yeah. And that's yeah. the class, but we're moving with the class. Yes, God. Okay, um, there, there are people that have been homeless. They're, uh, they yes. live, you know, for multiple reasons, whether it's a single parent, whatever. Uh, there's no home. They live in a car. Uh, financial strain, abandonment issues. Uh, hand me down clothes. Uh, they're of a different race, they're around, they're one race and they're around people of another race and they're being persecuted, mocked and ridiculed. So there could be a, a, a lot of, uh, a parent could be a jealous, controlling, there could be birth defects within someone's life, poor social skills. See, getting saved, uh, getting saved, you'll have peace. You'll grow into peace. Amen. And you'll be calmer, you'll be able yeah, to, yes. uh, and the top right, Next to the door, there's two uh, white books up there on the top shelf by Watchman Nee. One of them is called The Spiritual Man. And in The Spiritual Man, there's three different books in one. It's $14. Uh, there's three different books in one. And in the third book, it has a lot to do with the, with passivity. Passive mind and a passive will, especially the mind. He, he deals with the mind real well. So when you talk about the passive mind, uh, it would be so improving his social skills. My mind, because of the drugs, the alcohol, I would drink so much I would pass out. I would go like an almost like a like a coma. Or we would do we would do crystal meth, we'd do cocaine for days, and then we'd take uh, downers and we'd go into a deep sleep and sleep for 36, 36 hours. And when we come out of that, see, uh, there what demons invade your body during that time. Yeah. And what happens is, it, my mind became passive. You'll see uh, kids, young people that spend so six to ten hours a day, electronic devices, getting, uh, explosions and lights and flashes and new bodies, and, the, and so then they come to church and they're not getting it because they're used to the flashes, the loud explosions, and all, all the flashing lights are going off, and it creates a passivity within their mind. And so then what happened with me, and, and it happens with a lot of people, they're called a passive mind. A passive mind needs an outside force to come and motivate it. So someone, I would be talking to someone, 
and they'd, they'd be telling me a story. So I would tune in, I would listen to what they were saying, and then my mind would flash to my childhood. Then I'd tune back in for a little bit, then my mind would flash what I was going to do next. Then I'd tune back in, my mind would flash someone else, I'd tune back in, and my mind would flash someone else. Then we'd get done with the three or four or five paragraphs, and I had no idea what they said. Yes. Then because my mind, my, my mind would check in, check out, and I would daydream, space out. Yeah, uh, and I would just, uh, uh, forgetfulness. So the tuning in, the tuning out. So what happened, be renewed in the spirit yes. of your mind, yes. which means the word renewed in the, in the Greek means be renovated in the spirit of your mind. Okay, what we're going to do, I'm going to come, I'm going to, come to a stop right there, and we're going to have a short, 